Welcome to this instructional video of the iColor Pro Rip software from Uninet. The iColor Pro Rip is the software that resides between the graphic design application like Corel Draw, Photoshop, and your iColor printer. The Rip software allows you to separately control each layer of color in your graphic, giving you the ability to control not only what you see, but what is above or below the main layer. The iColor Pro Rib gives you the unique ability to use one machine to print images with white as an underprint or an overprint in one pass. Design files can be printed directly from your favorite graphics program, as well as imported directly into the iColor Pro Rib. Three cartridge configurations are available. The CMYKQ is for standard print jobs that do not require a spot color. This queue assumes that the media being printed on is white. Use this queue for normal, everyday printing, as well as on banner media, iColor Presto media, and for dye sublimation prints. The overprint queue is for printing white as an overprint in one pass for reverse printing. This configuration is for textile and hard surface transfer printing, where white is needed as an overprint applied on top of all the other colors. When the image is pressed to the garment, the transfer sheet is flipped over and the white becomes the underprint. The underprint queue is for right side printing and allows for printing white as an underprint in one pass, typically used for transparencies, cleared labels, dark media, or Uninet AquaClear paper. This is configured for right side printing, where the white is printed first as an underprint all in one pass. The final product is what comes out of the printer. For the overprint and underprint configurations, the exclusive color mapping feature of the RIP overrides the basic driver of the printer and automatically sends the proper color to the proper channel. You will also see a representation of how to install the toner cartridges based on the iColor printer being used. Once you select the queue, in this case we will select the overprint queue for printing transfers, you will then select the type of media you wish to use. As I select the media, Notice that the parameters change here. For example, if I select the iColor Premium Media, note that the input tray indicates that I should use the bypass or multi-purpose tray when printing with the iColor 550 printer. If I choose the iColor Standard Media, then the software is telling me to put the media in tray 1. The paper type is also preset for you, so there is no need to remember the suggested settings. Let's import an image. You can do this by either dragging and dropping or by clicking the green plus and navigating to your image. You could bring in as many images as you would like and work on them independently or at the same time. Note that the mirror function is automatic for the overprint queue as well. You can always override any of these settings as desired, but make sure you are doing so under the page tab. If you are changing settings under the queue tab, these changes will be saved and will affect other projects loaded into the queue. If changes are made under the Page tab, they are only active for the graphic loaded. You can also indicate the number of copies you wish to print here. The viewer to the right gives you a preview of the image or images loaded in the queue. Note that this is a low resolution preview to increase the performance of the software. To zoom out, scroll your mouse back or use the magnifiers here. Use the scroll bars to move the page into view. Moving to the Job tab, there are options to move and control the size of the image on your page. The easiest way to resize your image is to simply drag the corner of your image like so. You can easily move the image anywhere on the page or use these controls at the top of the menu bar. If you require an exact dimension, enter it here. If this icon is locked, your proportions will remain intact. Clicking the lock icon will allow you to change both dimensions of the graphic. If you choose to rotate the image, simply click the rotate drop down and choose how you wish to rotate the image. Clicking the color adjust button will allow you to change various attributes of your image, including color density, brightness, saturation, the amount of white toner coverage, and choke of the underprint layer. All of this is preset by Uninet to recommended settings based on the media used, but you can override it quite easily. You can add more white or adjust the choke by adjusting here. Once satisfied, click OK. To increase durability and create a softer hand, preset automatic rasterization effects are available. It is recommended to choose one of these effects when your image has very little negative space. 
you can choose between holes or stripes from the drop-down menu. In this example, we'll choose stripes. Then import the image and click on the preview to see how the image will print. Repeating these steps and selecting the holes option will result in this type of effect. Another great feature of the ProRip is to easily duplicate your image on your page without having to design this in your graphics program. Import your image and resize as desired. If you wish to make any changes, do it now. Once ready, click the Copies button and a duplicate image will appear. You can now drag the border out to the right to create more copies horizontally. Once satisfied, you can then drag the border vertically to cover the entire page. Use these controls to change the spacing between each graphic. For advanced layouts, click the Copies button. You can stagger the images if desired by clicking on one of these presets or creating your own spacing here. Once satisfied, click Apply. It is also possible to crop an image from the ProRip software. Load your image and click Crop. In the preview window, simply drag the crop lines to the desired position. In this example, we only want to print the Uninet logo. Once finished, click Create. You now have the cropped image and can proceed as normal. Let's move to Selective Background Removal. JPEG images are typically the worst kind of image to work with because they always have a background color. Pressing a large square image with a background onto a garment yields very undesirable results. However, if you have a JPEG with a uniform background, in this case black, it's quite easy to get rid of the black elements of the graphic and create a usable image that will look great on a black shirt. Import the image, Size as desired, click Jobs, Production Plugins, and Knock Me Blackout. By default, the suggested amount of black is automatically removed. You may adjust the color settings with these slider bars, but we're satisfied with the pre-selected settings. The transparent view shows where the color was removed. Click the shirt color, and then you can see how the image will look on your preferred substrate color. Once satisfied, click OK. Notice that we've selected the Stripes Rasterization option as well. Now this image will print without the black background and black elements with added rasterization. If any other color needs removal, use the Knock Me Out Color function, most typically used to remove the color of your substrate. You can also change colors within a graphic. Once your graphic is loaded, click this color palette at the top of the screen or right click on the image and select Job Color Replacement. Select the color that you want to change with the dropper. That color is represented here. Then input the color parameters you want to change to here. In this case, we will change the yellow to cyan. Click Add and then Apply. To see a preview of this color change, click the Color Replacement Preview button at the top of the preview window. To change another color, simply repeat the process. This time we'll select the red and change it to yellow. Click Add and Apply, then Preview. If you want to get rid of a color change, click the color change selection you want to eliminate and click Remove. When finished, click Apply and then refresh the preview. Note that none of this changes the original file colors. This only changes the current job. 
It is also possible to load a job into the RIP directly from any Windows-based program. To achieve this, you must install the appropriate print queues from the queue manager. Doing this creates separate printers in Windows and can be seen under Printers and Scanners. Click Queue, Manage Queues, and then click Install for the queue with which you wish to work. In this example, we'll install the Overprint queue only. Now, when you print from an outside program, that file will automatically be loaded into the queue. To demonstrate this, let's print a test page from the iColor 550 Overprint device we just added. Now you can see the test page was loaded into the rib and can be manipulated or just printed as is. We mentioned earlier in this video that you can load as many images as you wish and print them all together or individually. Load all images you wish to print and adjust as needed. You can specify the number of pages to print for each graphic individually. Once ready, to print all three of these images at the same time, hold the Shift key and click the images in the queue you want included in the print job, then click Print. Once an image has printed, it will be placed in the reserve section for later use. You can control the length of time an image is held in reserve by clicking Q, Properties, Job Reserve, and setting the length of time desired. If you want to keep your images there indefinitely, unclick the Enable Job Reserve. Images in the Job Reserve section can be dragged up to the active queue at any time. Keep your most popular images handy by using this feature rather than reloading an image every time. Note that when you drag an image that was previously printed back up, you will notice that it has been closed using the same parameters set from the previous print. If you wish to make any changes to the graphic, click Open and proceed as normal. For more detailed instructions on the iColor Pro Rip software, consult the user manual. Thank you for watching.